We're talking about alternatives to the finite difference method for obtaining approximate numerical solutions to differential equations. In the previous video, we discussed the spectral method, which is based on the method of weighted residuals. Here, I'm just going to give you a very, very brief introduction to the finite element method, which is also based on the weighted residuals approach. If you watched that previous video, remember we talked about basis functions and weight functions, or trial and test functions, as they're often called in the finite element community. And the terminology we use here is weak form and strong form. I won't get into the reason for those terms, but just remember the strong form is the differential form of the governing equations. The weak form is the integral or variational form of those equations. So the common approach is to use Galerkin method. That's not always done, but it's very common. In which case the weight functions, the Ws, are the same as the basis functions that we select in order to represent the approximate numerical solution. If you remember from that previous video, we had the inner product of R with the W sub i, and that's being set equal to zero. So the residual is here in squiggly brackets, that's F minus L operating on U, where U is being expressed as a series expansion in terms of these basis functions, the phi sub n's that we've pre-selected. We have capital N of those terms, and that will determine the order of the approximation. Then the phi sub i of x's, those are the weight functions, and in the Glurkin method, they're same, the same as the, the basis functions. And if you watch the variational methods version of this video about finite element methods, one of the things I emphasize there is what we're essentially doing is the inverse variational problem. To go from the strong form to the weak form, to get the integral form from the differential form. Again, I don't want to go into a lot of detail. I just want to contrast this finite element method with the finite difference and spectral methods that we've been discussing. So the difference with finite element methods as compared to spectral methods, remember spectral methods, we had a global basis function that spanned the entire domain, and then we would choose how many of those basis functions we want to include in our approximation. So that was capital N. So there, N was large. In the case of finite element methods, instead what we're going to do is choose very small values of capital N. So the number of terms in our expansion is going to be probably one or two, so linear or quadratic if we're using polynomials. Instead of having one function that spans the entire domain, we're going to divide the domain up into a whole bunch of little elements. Each element then will have a shape function, these typically linear or quadratic shape functions, but they only apply over these small little elements, which is why you can get away with a small capital N. So that's the fundamental difference. So these shape functions, those are the basis functions, applied across each individual element. So now you'll notice we're back to a local approximation method where we're approximating little pieces of the domain, in this case in terms of these shape functions. I've added some references here. If you want to look at this from the variational point of view, which is the origins of the finite element method, you can look in my book on that. There's also some discussion in Moyne as well as Chung. If you're in the fluid dynamics area, then Chung has several books uh, that do a really good job of discussing the finite element method in the context of fluid dynamics and solving the Navier-Stokes equations. There's also a way you can combine the benefits of the spectral method with those of finite element methods. Primarily, the benefits of finite element methods being that we've discussed in earlier videos, you can represent very complex domains very accurately as you get smaller elements to cover the entire domain. You can combine the two together into what's called the spectral element method. So what you're doing is you're dividing up the domain into discrete elements, just like a finite element method, but now these elements are bigger than what you would choose if you're just doing the finite element method. So you have bigger elements, so you need more accuracy, you need more terms in your shape functions. So the way you accomplish that is that you apply the spectral method across each of these larger elements. And now you can choose capital N to be, say, 6, 7, 8, 9. The order of the polynomial that you're using over each element then is much larger than just one or two for linear or quadratic. So it's kind of a hybrid method. It gives you some of the benefits of both in terms of the spectral accuracy, the spectral convergence rate, but the flexibility of treating complex geometries using the finite element method. So in some sense, it's the best of both worlds. There's an excellent code that was developed by Argo National Labs known as NEC 5000. It's used across the world, primarily research context. It's, it's a really good CFD code based on this spectral element approach.